Let's magnify the Lord, saints of the Most High God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a worship experience. We want to thank God for uh, that worship. God, we need you. We need you. No matter what we're going through, we need you, oh God. And so we want to just lift up the name of the Lord and magnify him as we prepare our hearts for the word of God. We need you, Lord. So we ask that you would just pray with us uh, as we enter into the presence of the Lord uh, for the word of God. Father, we ask that right now you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for that worship uh, that just reminded us just how much we need you, O Lord. But then we, we, we not only need you, O God, in our worship, need you as we walk in our lives. God, we need you to give us wisdom and revelation to understand your word so we can walk worthy of your word, oh God. We thank you for everyone that's here. We ask that uh, the word would be released, oh God, in a manner that it would prick the hearts of your people, that we will not be the same. God, we don't want to hear just another sermon. We want to hear a word that's going to change our lives, correct our walk, and put us in a place of being able to um, fulfill the assignment that you've given us. Now, I pray for everyone that's listening, oh God, everyone that's watching, that you would cause them to get a word, oh God, that will help them. Cause them, oh God, to hear something that, that would prick their hearts to move uh, even closer to you. Uh, whatever it is, God, uh, just don't leave us like you found us. As we, as we tap into the word of God today, uh, you know, move in our heart in a special manner, Lord, and let us be different. Well, uh, we give you glory and praise in the name of the Lord Jesus, by the power of your spirit. God, we release this, this prayer in the atmosphere uh, for the people of God during this season of our lives. Glory to your name. Again, this is Brother Jerry, uh, Tristone, New Beginning Embassy. And we are um, in this series where we're dealing with um, the church, uh, the ecclesia, and the work that God has assigned our hands to do. Uh, I want to open with this scripture as we bring our hearts together around the Word of God. Um, you got your Bibles? You hold them up. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is better after having heard this word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now open your Bibles with us, if you will, to the book of Colossians, the third chapter of the book of Colossians. There's a scripture tucked away there that grabs our attention today. The book of Colossians, the third chapter, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, the book of Colossians, third chapter, one verse of scripture, verse number 24, and it reads like this in the New English translation. It says, because you know that you will receive your inheritance from the Lord as the reward. Serve the Lord Christ. Let me read it again. Because you know that you will receive your inheritance from the Lord as the reward. Glory to God. Serve the Lord Christ. Amen. Amen. So that's going to be our focus for the day. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. And if I had a subtitle, it would be costly anointing. So serving the Lord, serving the Lord. Last week, brothers and sisters, we learned that from Psalms 34 and 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth us out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth us out of them all. Amen. Many of the afflictions, but God delivers us. But that our God is a very present help in the time of need is the assurance that we have, no matter what the afflictions are. And that came out of Psalms 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. God is our refuge and strength, and he's a very present help in trouble. 
That means no matter what you're going through, he got you. <laughs> Amen. I'm so glad that the Lord has got us. We know that we have a God that loves us and that keeps us no matter what we are going through. We have a God that loves us and a God that keeps us no matter what we are going through. And, and, and he has given us everything we need to be victorious. Did you hear me today? He has given us everything we need to be victorious. Second Peter says it this way, reading it from the New Living Translation, chapter one. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need to, for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. <laughs> Somebody say coming to know him. Coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and inheritance. His marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you, Peter says, these are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Ah, oh, that's good news, see, because we realize now many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord delivers us out of them all, but he is our God and he is our refuge and our strength. And he's a very help in the time of trouble. And he's given us promises. And these promises enable us to share his nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. That's good news. I can stop right there. That's good news all by itself. But let's press on. Everything, he's given us everything, everything, he's given us everything, everything means everything. We need to believe that. I said we need to believe that. God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We got to believe that. He's given us everything. We got to believe that. Amen. Amen. Jesus states that fact in his discourse in Matthew. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 25. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. It is, isn't life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Do you hear this? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Amen. What Jesus is literally saying is, if God will take care of the birds, surely he'll take care of you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He will take care of us. Why? Because he's given us everything we need for living a godly life. Amen. He's given us everything. Paul said to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 8, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Glory to the most high God. I'm just trying to share some things with you to build you up, to help you to understand that God really is in control. Let me read it again. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, somebody say all things, all things. at all times, somebody say all times. all times, having all that you need, somebody say all that you need. You will abound in every good work. That's, what, that's just how much he's taking care of us. Now, I'm sharing these scriptures because we need encouragement during these times of difficulty so that our focus, hear me now, remains on him and not on what we find ourselves going through. Amen. 
our focus has to remain on him. But Brother Jerry needs some food. He'll take care of that. I need clothes. He'll take care of that. I don't have everything I need. Yes, you do. He's taking care of you. Amen. So I'm sharing these scriptures so that you can build your faith up on the word of God and realize according to the word, he got you, saint. Amen. Amen. He's got you. So that our focus does not become the things we need. Our focus does not become the clothes we need. Our focus does not become the things he's already provided for us. No, our focus has to be him. Somebody say him. Our focus has to be on him, to trust him, to seek his kingdom above all else, to live for him. You see where I'm shifting you? Away from you to him. It's all got to be about him. See, because as a believer goes on his spiritual way, we should gradually begin to realize that to live for yourself, to focus on yourself, is not the will of God. And it borders on sin. Amen. God doesn't want us focusing on ourselves. That's why he gives us everything we need. That's why he supplies all of our needs. Because he doesn't want our focus to be on us, on ourselves. He wants our focus to be on him. John 12 says this. Verily, verily, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Well, where, you, where does that fit, Brother Jerry? Because God does not want us to focus on ourselves and to be self-focused. No, no. He wants us to recognize that if I live for him, if I live with my focus on him, if I don't live for myself, like a grain of wheat falling to the ground and, and refusing to die. That means I'm living for me. Amen. I don't care about nothing else. God does want, not want us to live for ourselves, but for him. And to produce many seeds. See, it, see if I live for him, I'll produce many seeds. If I fall to the ground and I don't die, then I only produce one seed, and that's me. And God does never want us to live for ourselves. Amen. In another place, God said it this way. Jesus tells us we ought to be fruit bearers. In other words, to produce fruit to be fruit producers. The same way that if I fall to the ground and die, I become a seed producer. He wants me to also be a fruit producer. I hope y'all getting this. In other words, it ain't about you. It's about what God wants to multiply you to do. <laughs> it's about how God wants to multiply what he's doing through you. So it's not just for you. Amen. So he wants us to be Fruit producers. Let's read that in John 15. John 15 is amazing. I'm reading it from the New English Translation. Verse number five. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. And the one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Ah, glory to God. Set up my city. I am the vine and you are the branches. And the one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. Because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. We are to bear fruit in him. <laughs> John 15 and 1 says it this way. I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. 
He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit in me, in me, in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it will bear more fruit. God wants us to be fruit producers. God wants us to be seed producers. Look, if all you care about you, yours, your four no more, if all you care about is yourself, if all you care about is your own little stuff, then you are not being used to God because God didn't call you, believer, to care about you. He called you for everybody else. He called you for those that he would produce through you. He called you for those seeds that you would be producing through him. Hope you get that today. We are to bear fruit. Amen. And we'll bear more fruit because he'll prune us and take away what's stopping us from, from producing. And then he will produce more fruit through us. I'm so excited about that. Your life makes a difference. Yes, it does. Now, what does that mean to bear fruit? It means to produce. It means to bring forth. John 15, 16 says this in the CSB Bible, your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Now, that's amazing to me because when he begins to produce fruit in us, he does the work of producing the fruit in us, but he turns around and says that with this fruit that he's producing in us, it'll remain, but here's where we get a benefit. So that whatever you ask the Father... In my name, he will give it you. Amen. What does that mean to bear fruit? It means to produce. Well, what is the fruit? The fruit is the way we act on his behalf. Ah, I need you to let that resonate a minute. Because we're going to dig into it. The fruit is the way we act on his behalf. Think about that and turn to Matthew 7. Amen. Matthew 7. You there? Verse 16 says this. You can identify them by their fruit. That is, by the way they act. <laughs> can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. Verse 20, yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruits, so you can identify, identify people by their actions. Wow. By their actions. By their actions. What do people see in your life? What kind of fruit are you bearing? Figs and thistles? What are you bearing? Thorn bushes? Well, let's, let's, look at, let's look at how that works. We take note that Jesus says this in Matthew in identifying false prophets. He says by their actions you can tell their source. You can tell the source of a false prophet by the way they act, by their actions. People should be able to see our fruit and know that we belong to the Lord. Glory! Hallelujah. Jesus, help us. People should be able to see our fruit and know we belong to the Lord. Why? Because he is the vine. We are the branches. We must be fruitful in him. We can't be fruitful apart from him. What is the fruit that we are to bring forth or produce that we can only produce if we're abiding in him? Huh? Because people should see that you are a branch that belongs to him by the fruit that you bear. By the way that you act. By the seeds that you produce. Amen. John says 
that the fruit we bear is from being in him and abiding in him. The fruit that we bear is from being in him and abiding in him. Help me, Holy Ghost, get this across. When we are in him and he is abiding in us, believer, we will bear much fruit because he is the source of our fruit. <laughs> yes, he is. I say he is the source of our fruit. When we abide in him. See, we've learned that it is all about him and not ourselves. Everything we do, everything we do is to be done for the Lord and not for ourselves. Everything. You think you're going to that job because you want that paycheck. No. Even going there should be for the Lord. Are you hearing me? Amen. And when we look at Jesus, what was his source? What was his source? By the Bible, the source was the Father. He says this in John 8, 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I always do those things that please him. So his source was the Father. What was his fruit? He clearly lets us know his fruit was the work. Luke 4 and 18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. <laughs> that the blind will see. That the oppressed will be set free. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Wow. Wow. So based on that, based on that call, based on the presence of God in him, based upon the spirit of the Lord that was upon him, you see what he said the fruit would be. And we know it was so because when we look at Mark, look at Matthew 4.23. Turn to Matthew 4.23. Matthew 4.23. This is so powerful. We're talking about his work, which was his fruit. And his fruit was his work, the way he acted. Amen. Matthew 4, 23 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and, pre and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Fruit. Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Fruit. And then Matthew 14, 14. And Jesus went forth, saw a great multitude, was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Fruit. Did you hear it? That's the fruit that he bared. Healed the sick. Set captives free. The blind got their sight. Proclaimed that captives would be released. He brought good news to the poor. Fruit. His fruit was the work that he did. And his work was the fruit that he released. Wow. All God's children are God's servants. And God places the believer, us, in his church, ecclesia, and gives to each of us a ministry to fulfill. Why? Because he wants us to produce fruit. <laughs> Amen. We are to produce fruit to live a spiritual life and do spiritual work. This make it sense to anybody. Some say milk and meat. We are to be fruit bearers. That means we are to, the work that we do are to reflect the source we're from. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Our source is him, Christ Jesus. That's our source. John 15 and 4 says, remain in me and I remain in you. And just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. It's, it's just that simple. John 15 and 7 says, if you remain in me and my words <laughs> remain in you, ask whatever you want. It'll be done for you. I don't know how much plainer the scriptures can be. Our lives, brothers and sisters, wait, but hold on a minute. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Our lives, brothers and sisters, to represent our source, which is the Lord Jesus, to live for him, to do what Jesus did. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. It ain't about your talk. It's about your walk. Hallelujah. How are you walking? What fruit are you bearing? Our fruit is the work. We should be actively healing the sick, casting out demons, preaching the kingdom of God, living a life of signs and wonders and miracles and functioning in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's what our lives should consist of. Amen. That's the work. That's the fruit. Hebrews 2 and 4 tells us, while God confirmed their witness with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Every Christian ought to seek the power of the Holy Spirit in order to do the work of the Lord and to produce fruit. Did you hear that? Are you bearing fruit? If you are, we should see it. We should see the fruit that you're bearing. Amen. Amen. The effectiveness, my brothers and sisters, of our work depends on whether we have the experience of being so immersed in the Holy Spirit that he no longer seeks to be satisfied, but to please him who sent him. Are you still looking to be satisfied? You still looking for yours? You still concerned about what you done went through? Is your focus on what you don't have, what you can't do, what's happened to you in your life? That's self focused. That's self-centered. What about Jay? Hold on. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Well, let, let me give you some brief, brief scripture. Because your focus can't be on you or what you've gone through. Because it's a costly anointing. can't be on what you've suffered. We dealt with suffering last week. You can go out there on YouTube and listen to that. But I want you to get this today. God wants us to bear fruit. It ain't about what you went through. He wants you to bear fruit. It ain't about the challenges in your life. He wants you to bear fruit. And he says this in Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. You're working for the Lord. Ephesians 6 says, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord and not people. We get this thing confused. You ain't doing it for me. You're doing it for the Lord. This is all about doing it for the Lord, working for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, seeks to work through the believer and produce fruit. I said he wants to work through us and produce fruit. What kind of fruit? 
Healing the sick, casting out demons, signs, wonders, and miracles. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. He wants to produce fruit. Souls being saved, eyes being opened. He wants to produce fruit. But there are hindrances. Help us, Jesus, to him producing the fruit through us. There are hindrances. Hindrances of sin. Hindrances of pride. Hindrances of, of, of self-will. Hindrances of relying on self and being independent of God instead of depending on God. Hindrances in believing on yourself and not on him. Believing in your intellect and your knowledge and your background and your experience has nothing to do with depending on him. So what happens when we have all these hindrances, God's power, although it is in us, has no outlet. Glory to God, help me, Jesus. Has no outlet, has no exit. Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you, in your spirit, man, but he can't get out and do the work he wants to do through you because of the hindrances. Somebody say hindrances. So what kind of hindrances you got in your life? I don't know. Ask the Holy Spirit. Because he's been waiting to tell you. Why? So that he can deal with your hindrances. So that he can flow more freely through you. Help me, Holy Ghost, to flow freely more through me. Show me my hindrances. Show me my hindrances. So that you won't be hindered. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to grieve you, Holy Spirit. So he speaks, he seeks to work through the believer. So brothers and sisters, could this be why we don't see the miraculous in our walk? Could it be why we don't see the signs, wonders, and miracles because of our hindrances of sin and pride and Jealousy and strife? Could it be we don't see the fruit? We're not bearing fruit? We're not seeing the miraculous? We're not seeing legs grow out? We're not seeing financial abundance? Could it be the reason we're not seeing healed relationships is because we have these Hindrances? Could that be it? I dare say. I dare say. I think most of us as believers want to do powerful work. I know I do. Do you? Do you? You want to do powerful work? That's a yes or no. Do you? Let me hear you. I know I do. But let me ask you the next part. Are you willing to pay the price to be used mightily by the Lord? You willing to pay the price? Because yes, it's costly. Don't cost you nothing to get saved, but it costs you everything to be powerful. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Because to be powerful, there's things you have to do. You have to remove the hindrances. Galatians 5 tells us this. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Verse 25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. This is amazing. The scriptures are so clear. Those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires. Now I want you to take note. It did not say to nail the passions and desires daily, which is what most of us do. Amen. It says have already nailed the passions and desires of our sinful nature 
to his cross and crucified them there. See, we fail, brothers and sisters. I know I, I have in my life. We fail because we keep trying to nail them daily instead of reckoning them as already nailed and live after the Spirit. See, we're still trying to do the work when Jesus has already accomplished it. See, we always think we got to get our hands in there to make this thing work. So I get up every day and I, and I nail my passions to the cross. Well, first of all, the terminology is wrong. Now, if I get up every day and I reckon that my passions and desires have already been nailed, and, and as it says here, I live by the Spirit, it's a done deal. And see, then it's the Holy Spirit that does the work, not you. We get up and we pray, God, you know, uh, give me more love. Give me, God, uh, let your power manifest in, your, in my life. God, I want to see uh, signs, wonders, and miracles. And then we got issues in our life, so we find ourselves trying to use our strength to stop living out of our sinful nature. And that never works. God is not going to strengthen you in your flesh to deal with your flesh. No. What he'll do is cause you to know intuitively by the word of God that you have already nailed your passions and desires of your sinful nature. And you recognize that and you reckon that. And so today, your focus is to do one thing, live by the Spirit. <laughs> live by the Spirit. Manifestation of power, brothers and sisters. And I'm learning this more and more every day. Manifestations of power is a result of the experience that we have at Calvary. You hear that? Manifestations of power is based on how much you recognize, understand, and have revelation about what happened to you on Calvary. And we try to seek Pentecostal experiences of the Holy Ghost without recognizing Calvary death to our sinful nature. This it catch that the ministry. Paul didn't say, I'm going to be crucified. Paul said, I have been. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ. And no longer I who live. I have been crucified with Christ. Reading from the NET. And it's no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. Living after the Spirit. So the life I now live in the body, I live because of the faithfulness of the Son of God. In other words, what he did on Calvary, it's done. He was faithful in paying the price for me. He was faithful in dying on the cross for me. He was faithful because he loved me and he gave himself for me. So the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, is not willing to dis dispense power to men and women who have not been dealt with by the cross. Most of us have not been dealt with by the cross. We don't have revelation of what he did at the cross. We have not gone back to the cross. Okay, God, what have you done for me at this cross? Oh, you nailed my sinful nature to the cross. And then Romans 8 tells us, reckon that to be true. Count that as a done deal. Count that as a finished product. I have already been crucified. My sinful nature has already been nailed. So stop trying to go back and nail it again. Just live after the Spirit. Live after the Spirit. Live in the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says. I don't know what we've been talking about. Verse 25 of Galatians 5. Since we are living by the Spirit. Since we are living by the Spirit. Since we are living by the Spirit. 
Let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Amen. We fail also because we don't allow the Spirit to do the work. We've got to live after the Spirit. Let Him do the work. Do you hear me? You getting this? Let me begin to wrap this up real quick. Galatians 5, 17. See, we fail because we don't allow the Spirit to do the work. Remember, I can do all things through Him. Galatians 5, 17 says, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out your good intentions. See, the, the, the sinful nature keeps trying to pull you away from your good intentions. That's why you have to be living after the Spirit. Amen. And in the book of Acts, when we see the Holy Spirit working in the book of Acts at the, at the birthing of the church, I want you to notice something you may not have noticed. In the book of Acts, it's the Holy Spirit himself appointing and sending men to do the work. God simply sends whom he wants. <laughs> God chooses the worker. The worker does not choose himself. And what made Acts so successful is that the Holy Spirit said, go, they went. He said, turn, they turned. He said, don't go, they didn't go. He did the work. God is the sole master of his work, believer. God sends us. So what does the Lord send you to do? We have to heed the mind of the Holy Spirit. Because when we look at Acts, we read in the book of Acts such phrases as, the Spirit said to him, Acts 10, 19, being sent, by, sent out by the Holy Spirit, Acts 13 and 4, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit, Acts 16 and 6. So other than obeying orders, no one had the authority to decide anything. The works of the apostles were performed by heeding the mind of the Holy Spirit. It's that simple. We've been trying to do the work ourselves. And that is not living after the Spirit. Let me close with this verse. I'm reading it from the Amplified. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. And I pray this encourages you. It says in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, starting at verse one. I, therefore, the prisoner for the Lord, appeal to you, and beg you to walk, lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called with behavior that is a credit to the summons to God's service. Living as becomes you with complete lowliness of mind, that's humility, and meekness, that's unselfishness and gentleness, and mildness, with patience, bearing with one another and making allowances because you love one another. Amen? And then in verse number 15, Paul says, let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, Enfolded in love, let us grow up in every way and in all things under him who is the head, even Christ. You hear it? You hear it? Be a prisoner of the Lord Jesus. Walk worthy of the divine call. Bear fruit in him. Fall to the ground and die so that seeds can be produced. And then you're serving the Lord. I know it's costly, 
But then you're serving the Lord. Colossians 3.24, we open with this verse. Because you know that you will receive your inheritance from the Lord as the reward. Serve the Lord Christ. God bless you, saints. Get busy doing the work by serving him. Amen? We love you. We'll see you next week. Wow. What an amazing word. If this word blessed you like it blessed me, go ahead and comment in the comment section, like, share this video so everybody can experience what the Lord is doing throughout this broadcast. If you've been watching our services and you're like, man, I've been totally blessed this week, or I've been, I've been watching for a few weeks, been blessed or a few months, and I just want to sow into what the Lord is doing there. I just want to help financially and partner with this church for what God is asking them and leading them to do. Um, it's really easy. All you have to do is go to our website, www.tsmbchurch.com and click the give tab to follow the prompts. And it's really easy. Um, if that's uncomfortable for you, you can also come to the church, bring, bring your gift, your seed, even if, you, if, even if it's your tithe and your offering, you can bring it to the church at 5550 Reading Road, Cincinnati, 45237, or you can send it in the mail. Um, we're exhausting every way uh, to give and just making sure that you have an opportunity to sow. For those that have already gave or have been giving and, and continue to sow their tithe and their offering, thank you so much. There's a lot going on here. We give out, we still give out food to the homeless. We still, um, we still are doing, making strides in the community. We're doing all these things that God is still leading us to do even though the building is shut down. And because of your help, we're able to keep our daycare open. Our daycare is, is up and functional and up and running full time right now. Um, we were running it as a pandemic care during the, the harder season of this COVID-19. And, and it's all because you've given. It's all because you've sown a seed. And we just wanna say thank you so much. Once again, we can't wait to worship with you in this building, in person, embracing each other, praying for each other, laying hands on each other again. God bless you.